Hey everybody, just in case you missed the Google Meet today, this was the class from Monday, October 5th, 2020. We went over sanitizer levels and contact times, the three compartment sink setup, which is actually four steps. We also reviewed which dishes belong at the three compartment sink and did a little bit of a question and answer session about uh, sanitizer and uh, the setup of the three compartment sink as well. So let's get moving. What type of sanitizer does Southern Garrett High School Foods Kitchen use? As we talked about last week, there are three types of approved sanitizers, iodine, bleach, and quat. The one we use is quat in these tablet form right here. That's the one we use. It's uh, the main reason we use it is first of all, it's very safe. Nobody uh, has any allergies. Um, they're not allergic to it. It doesn't stain like bleach or iodine. <clears throat> so that's why we use it, and it's a very good sanitizer. And we'll go over the ratio of tablets to water here. I think this is the next slide. Oh wait, nope. Wait, we got to go over this first. What is this and what should we not put in it? Well, this is the garbage disposal over by the three compartment sink. And remember, we put as little as we can in here. If there's a little bit of lettuce or something left on a hotel pan, you spray it in there, it's no big deal. But grease definitely does not go into this food processor. What we do if we have grease is we try to let it cool off, we scrape it off and we put it in the garbage can. I will keep going over this over and over again because it's that important. It, it messes with our septic system if, if we're not careful about dumping oil into this into the drains. Okay, here we go. What is the ratio of tablets to water? The ratio is two tablets. I'm just going to write tabs to one gallon of water. And this will be a test question. I'm going to have to write kind of sideways here, sorry. Not the best, not the neatest work, but I think you can see it. Two tabs to one gallon of water. Where do we store a quat once we're, it's mixed up? Well, what we do is if you see this red bucket here, and we need to, I need to label this better. We'll, we'll do that. Um, this is right below the three compartment sinks here. And it says ice only. I'm going to mark this out. And we're going to make this bigger. You can't see it here, but it says quat. Okay. So this holds about six, uh, I think eight gallons or something like that. And if, if you're wondering how to measure it, let me erase here. Let me see. So let's I'm going to do the best I can drawing this. So the, on the inside of this, there's these little markers that say like, how many gallons like you know go from like two four six eight so it'll tell you how much water it holds okay so let's say we have we, we know that we need two tablets two tablets per gallon of water so if we're going to make eight gallons of quat sanitizer we would go eight times two because it's eight gallons of water two tablets per gallon, and that would be 16 tablets. It's also very important that you remember that these tablets have to be, have to be completely dissolved or the sanitizer becomes ineffective. So the next, let me get to the next slide here. Now we have to decide <clears throat> with the sanitizer, even though we've done the correct measurements, we ha how do we make sure that they're correct? How do we know if it's strong enough to be effective to kill germs? Because remember, there's a difference between cleaning and sanitizing. Sanitizing is killing germs. If you do not have the correct proportion of tablet to water and it's too weak, it's going to be ineffective and it's not going to kill germs. If it's too strong, it could be it could it could be harmful to someone's health because they would be ingesting um, this quad. It's just too strong. So now 
we have these little strips here and what they do I'm sorry this is still here but let me show you this so right here right there in that little piece of paper you just dip that into the sanitizer and you wait a second and it should be in between these two levels right here as we talked about last week it should be these two colors and if it looks like these two colors you're good so it can be between 200 ppm and 400 ppm which means parts per million all right now on to the three compartment sink setup we have wash we have rinse and we have sanitize what's the one that's missing the one that is missing and just as important is not just dry but air dry and the reason we say air dry is you can't the health department does not want us to take a towel and dry off dishes like you do at home sometimes they just need to sit there and air dry until they're completely dry so there's no like standing water on on the on the dishes themselves once again no no hand drying even if you're trying to help out uh, please just wait until they're dry and then we'll put them away okay let's move on this is a sign that's been there for a while and uh, it's kind of small but at the dish sink the three compartment sink there's no plates or bowls or silverware tongs especially knives small utensils go to the dish machine which we'll have a class on Thursday the three compartment sinks main use is for big pans pots things of that nature you know the silverware plates they go into the dish machine which will go over Thursday and remember knives always if you're gonna run a knife through the dish machine you have to watch it from start to finish you're responsible for your knife from the time you take it down to the time you put it back all right next slide all right sink number one this is pretty obvious Aiden's here has got a big thing of soap we need warm soapy water in sink number one why do we not use cold water in the sink well cold water if you have grease on a pan or something and the water is very cold it almost like makes the grease adhere to the pan and it's hard to rinse it off so you need nice warm soapy water it's also important to remember get those dishes as wiped off and get all the debris and leftover food into the garbage before you put them in the sink sink number two let's go moving along Casino, oops, I still got some drawings here. I'm sorry that there's some red there. I don't think I can erase that. But right here, if you look in the sink, and I'm sorry that red is there, you don't have to fill this up with hot soapy water if you don't want to. You can just rinse the dish off under the faucet as long as the water is warm. Okay? You can rinse it off under the faucet, get all the extra soap off there, and then we move on to the third phase sink number three this is a little harder to see uh, this is um, uh, sanitized with our quat sanitizer sanitize and remember sanitize this let's 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 remember the ratio two tabs per gallon okay And then the contact time, which we discussed, oops, that's not erasing. The contact time, let me erase this really quick. The, con the contact time is how long does this pan, like if we were washing a pan, how long does it need to stay in this sanitizer before it's killed the germs? It's a minimum, a minimum. of 30 seconds it has to be in there submerged for at least 30 seconds 30 seconds pardon the writing but I think you can see it minimum time of 30 seconds can it stay in longer sure but it has to stay in at least 30 seconds do you need to stand there and count now there's a clock right above you you can kind of look at the clock with the 
with a minute, a second hand, and you can just see it until it gets to 30. All right, last one. There are only four sinks. What is number four? Number four is air dry, people. Remember air dry. I think I made another slide, but I'm going to go ahead and show you on this one. Everything has to be air dry. But if you look here, what's wrong with this picture right here? First of all, this picture should probably be over by the dish machine. Second, this picture needs to be inverted. It needs to be upside down. And the reasoning behind that is, is you don't want any standing water to stay in there. So if you flip it upside down, the water will drain out and it can, it, it, it'll air dry a lot faster. All right. Once again, do not hand dry dishes. Let's say for instance, though, you need it to, you need it, this picture right away. Okay. You needed it right away and it needed to be dry. What you need to do is not use a towel, but you could get a paper towel and dry it off. Okay, so just remember, air dry, if you have to dry something off, please use a clean paper towel to dry off something. Once again, do not hand dry dishes. You can put them away. See how clear this is in this area where Aiden is? He put the dishes away after everything was air dried. Very important. Okay, so that's about it. Tomorrow we'll go over um, a worksheet uh, going over these levels and setup and things like that. And hopefully you can tune into that Google Meet and we can go up over that together as a group. If you cannot, I will have another video tomorrow explaining everything you'll need to know. So have a nice day. Thanks. Bye.